Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. This week we're going to cover acne vulgaris, one of the most common skin conditions in the western world. Classically it affects the face, neck and chest and is typified by obstruction of the pilus sebaceous follicle with keratin plugging. This then results in comedones, inflammation and pustules, but more on this later. Generally speaking it affects up to 90% of teenagers, of which only half seek medical advice. But this extends beyond teenagers, where 15% of all adult females and 5% of all adult males are also affected. Looking through a pathophysiological lens, there are multiple factors, but in essence, we know there's follicular epidermal hyperproliferation causing keratin plugging. This is what classically causes comedones. There may also be an androgenic component on this, albeit not always, and sebaceous gland activity and therefore sebum production is classically affected by varying androgen levels. With these changes, there is traditionally colonization with the anaerobic bacteria Propionibacterium acnes. All of these issues cause localized inflammation of the pilosebaceous unit. There is also some evidence suggesting genetic and ethnic factors as well, as well as correlation with high glycemic diets and acne vulgaris. Acne really only affects areas of the body where there is a high density of pilosebaceous glands, like the face. Additionally, NICE suggests that the presence of comedones is mandatory for a diagnosis. Without this, an alternative diagnosis should be sought. Comedones are in essence non-inflammatory lesions. If they are open comedones, they are known as blackheads, and if they are closed, they are known as whiteheads. Patients also have inflammation. This presents as papules and pustules which are usually less than 5mm, and cysts and nodules which are deeper and larger than 5mm. These, in severe cases, can cause sinuses. There is also often excessive sebum production, and this cycle of events causes scarring, be it atrophic or hypertrophic. With all these features, we can classify the severity of acne. Mild acne has mainly comedone-only disease with little inflammation, Moderate acne has inflammatory pustules and papules, whereas severe acne has widespread inflammation with papules, pustules, nodules and cysts, as well as possible scarring. Remember, some of the complications of acne could be severe scarring and even significant psychological impact. But bear in mind, the absence of comedone should give rise to an alternative diagnosis, such as acne rosacea, folliculitis, keratosis pilaris, and even drug-induced acne. When it comes to management, it's important for patients to avoid over-cleansing of the skin, with non-comedogenic cosmetic products to be used. They should also be advised that squeezing and picking spots often causes scarring, and that any treatment will take at least 8 weeks to work. The onset of treatment is often associated with irritation, redness and dry skin. For mild to moderate acne, a topical retinoid such as adapalene alone or with benzoyl peroxide should be considered. Retinoids should be avoided in pregnancy and breastfeeding. Topical antibiotics could also be considered, but should always be prescribed mm -hmm. alongside benzoyl peroxide to avoid bacterial resistance. Azelaic acid is also another option. For resistant moderate acne, consider adding daily oral antibiotics, usually tetracyclines, for up to 3 months. Remember, it's best practice to co-prescribe either a topical retinoid or benzoyl peroxide to avoid bacterial resistance. Erythromycin can be used in pregnancy if treatment is warranted, and if after 3 months and there is no improvement, consider switching to another antibiotic. If despite two or antibiotics, a referral to secondary care should be considered to start isotretinoin. It's also worth noting that there is evidence that the combined oral contraceptive pill alongside topical treatment can be considered in some women, such as Dianet, but the risks and benefit of hormonal treatment need to be discussed. A dermatology referral is warranted in severe cases of acne, such as acne conglobata or acne formulants, as well as if all primary care treatment has failed, or if this is significant for psychological damage. All patients should be reviewed within 8 to 12 weeks to consider step up or step down in their treatment. Generally speaking, dermatologists prescribe isotretinoin for severe acne treatment, to usually good effect. However, there is a number of caveats. All retinoids are teratogenic, so women are advised to use at least two forms of contraception, such as a combined pill and condoms, to prevent unwanted pregnancies. Dry skin, dry eyes and dry lips are a common complaint. There is also evidence that low mood may be exacerbated, and thus psychological impact really needs to be observed. Patients may also experience raised triglycerides, hair thinning, nosebleeds, 
and there's even some evidence of raised intracranial hypertension. Well that's that, it's quite a detailed overview of Acne Vulgaris and its management primary care. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to our Instagram page at dorky underscore docs as well as following us on our Facebook page where there's a load more revision content. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.